Um, if you can hear me, and I'm just put a thumbs up. If not, put a thumbs down. But the others can hear me well, so I think it's your mic. Try and work it out. Okay, thanks, Dorcas. Okay, so yeah, as I was saying, I would like for this to be a very interactive session. Um, I know we all time management is something we is something that we all struggle with. And especially now that you have a lot of work from Ten Academy, I know you also have things with your family that you need to attend to. You have maybe some of you are working and you have a lot of things that you feel like you need to finish. And you feel like sometimes um, time is not good for you. So throughout this whole session, we're going to look at the different techniques that we can use and how we can effectively manage time and also how we can prioritize our tasks effectively so we don't end up in the loop of feeling stressed or oh, I haven't finished this task, etc. So maybe just to, maybe just would like to hear um, maybe from one or two guys, um, are you having a problem with, is time management something that you also struggle with? Or if you don't struggle with time management, just give us a few tips of how do you effectively manage your time? Yeah, Collins struggles with it, that's that's great. Um, can someone maybe unmute and say something before we start? I'd like to make this more um, interactive. Okay, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Bernard. Yeah, yeah, it's a very interesting one, actually. Personally, I, I, I mean, time management is something that uh, is uh, so important. For instance, uh, you know, like me now, I have a couple of things I'm doing almost at the same period, so you know, trying to get those things together to meet up with uh, I mean, the different aspects of my work and this training. In fact, it's been it's been difficult. Although on my own, I've been trying a way to to manage it. So I believe maybe through this class there could be you know some better option. You know some better uh, strategic way that one can actually uh, uh, manage time. Because yes, as we grow in life. You know, time becomes uh, even more of essence because you have a lot of things you're doing. You want to grow family, training, work, and all that. So it's actually a very important uh, aspect because uh, uh, time management helps us, you know, keep those things in check while you also take care of your your health to avoid the uh, breaking down so it all boils down to that it's, it's part of life so it's good and i'm looking forward to <clears throat> personally to learning uh, like i said before new ways i can actually manage my time in uh, carrying out a whole lot of tasks for the days ahead thank you thank you also and um, it's nice to hear that it's this is uh a good topic for you and it's something that you also struggle with um thanks for your thanks for sharing um bennett and then dorcas then we can get started okay thank you um i think um like colin said i think um time management is 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 a really um a struggling um challenge and um um, for me, um, I don't have like a written down processes uh, to, to go about it. There are times that I use my Google Calendar to keep some few um, schedules uh, so that I don't skip it and then it sends me a reminder. But mostly, um, I always envision it in my, in my head, probably uh, before the week starts and um, during the day too, whatever I need to do, I just try to make sure that I envision it um, I sometimes just keep some notes, uh, just to make sure. And mostly, basically, I try to multitask, which sometimes become very difficult to to navigate through. But that is what I do to be able to catch up. So um, 
uh, like you are doing now i have to do a lot of things try to be on it as well so yeah basically try to share the time with everything that we think uh, we, we prioritize and then be able to do it so that's basically what i do um, to, to be able to go through the, the time stress yeah um, thanks, Bernard. It's nice to hear that you also use Google Calendar to remind you of meetings you don't need to forget and things like that. Thanks for sharing your view, um, Dorcas. All right, thank, thank you so much um, for this privilege. Yeah, I think time management is something that everyone has to find a way to go about it, especially as you get older. Uh, if, if you're married you have kids you have work you have so many things you have that are pulling on your time so uh, for me um the few techniques I, I use is number one i always put down my habit to do list that i work with a weekly to do list my priorities my kpis my deliverables for the week i have them written down and i try to prioritize them so the more important ones i make sure that i get them done first and then the ones that can come later I put them towards the latter part. Then I also use Google Calendar like um, Bernard Shit, especially for meetings. And I set it so that I get reminders. I use my alarms a lot. And I also do um, time blocking, especially when I have some really major deliverables to get done. So I block out maybe an hour or two hours or three hours and just focus on that until it's done you know and that is actually very effective because during that time nothing else is there, there are no distractions that's what i'm totally focused on until i get that thing done and then i maybe take a little break and then move on to other things so i look forward to learning more in this class thank you so much um thanks Darkas. it's nice to also see that you use um some prioritization techniques that you say you classify your tasks according to which ones are high priority you must start with those that's a really good way of um practicing good time management um thanks for sharing so i think we'll get started due to time and i just wanted to kick it off with some of the myths that people have about um time management um, so, like Dorka said, um, time management is something that you need to practice on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's not it's not common sense for you to know how to manage time, but you have to. It's a practice that you have to know. Okay, how do I manage my time well? How do I um, do time blocking? Like Dorka said, and it's a practice that you have to do on a day-to-day -day basis and gets better at it the more you practice time management techniques the better you get the more you get good at it and the less stressed you feel um, throughout the end of the day and then the other myth about time management is saying things like multitasking is efficient in a way um, some of some people may thrive doing multitasking but will you really get the best job done when multitasking so it it it's multitasking in my view is not something very efficient because you need to put if you want to make something really good you need to put all your focus into it so um doing one thing at a time at a specific time is going to make it's going to bring much more um your work is going to be much better than multitasking doing two things at the same time or three and the other thing is uh multitasking or time management takes the fun out of life and this is not true because if you don't manage your time well and you have tasks pending at the end of the day you get to feel stressed and you, you, your mind won't be settled so you'll be in the evening you're trying to sit down with your family to maybe eat or watch something and your head is just thinking about i have that task i need to finish when when am i going to finish it and things like that um in a way time management helps you to be fully present to everything that you're doing whether it's time with your family whether it's um work you need to do everything i think it's much more fun to live a life without stress as opposed to a stressful life. 
Um, and then there's this other people who work better under pressure. So waiting for last minutes before a deadline, that's when you feel like, um, that's when you, you start to work. And in a way, this is something that you need to, um, it's a mindset that you need to deconstruct. One, because sometimes you underestimate the time that you think you'll finish that work. So you might say, ah, that thing, I'm going to just finish it in 20 minutes before deadline. And then you find something that you didn't expect, a problem that you didn't expect to find. And then you end up um, getting, starts getting pressure and um, you end up submitting something that is not, that does, that is not really you because you just did it last minute. So it's important to also deconstruct that myth in your head. And then um, this other one that no matter what I do, I won't have enough time. And this is not true because if you, if you, if you really manage your time well, um, yeah, multitasking doesn't work sometimes. It's, that's true. Um, so if you if you effectively learn how to manage your time and understand which tasks are great and are of high priority and which ones not to pay attention to, I think you're going to effectively um, you, you're going to see that you have time. You you have enough time. You just um, some we sometimes just miss um, how to effectively manage it. And the truth about time management is, well, it's, you, you'll get more productive, you have less stress, your self-esteem also improves because you're proud of the work that you've done. And also you have that work-life balance that, um, yeah, so you don't get to work like uh, many hours and then you dismiss people like your family. Everyone gets like equal amount of time your work, your family, and everything else that you need to do. Maybe also should also factor in things like um, commute. If you're someone who commutes to work on a day-to-day -day basis, are there some things that I can put, uh, that I can do? Maybe it's reading something or just things like that. There's a way you can just plan your day effectively. And, you know, um, so there's also increasing um, your self-confidence and then you get to do, you get your goals achieved at the end of the day. So just a few steps to managing your time well. So, and this is something I would recommend before you go to bed. Um, so it's always important to plan your next day right before you go to bed, because then you'll wake up knowing exactly what Today, this is what I need to do, and this is how I'm going to do it. So the first thing to do, I mean, the, before you sleep, set all your goals. So maybe write a, a to-do list, or what do I need to get done tomorrow? Write everything down on, um, on maybe a piece of paper or just somewhere. And then once you set the different goals that you need to achieve, you start now prioritizing tasks. And we're going to look at the different techniques of prioritization. So say this is high priority task. This is uh, less priority. This one, um, not even a priority. Or can I delegate this task to someone else and things like that. And also get organized. This is by maybe writing down the the schedule or setting time blocks on Google Calendar, just like um, Dork has suggested. And then try to eliminate distractions around you. It could be your kids or anyone set at just, or even your colleagues or anyone, just ensure you eliminate um, all those distractions. And then try to overcome procrastination so that, that voice in your head that tells you, oh, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do this tomorrow. It's always good to just, um, and one thing that I love, there's this quote that always says, um, it, it's the frogs first. And sometimes it, 
Yeah, it the frogs first. So it means um, start with the work that gives you, like the bulky work that gives you a lot of stress or the one that you feel like it's hard. Start with it, and then once you get done with that, um, you'll 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 be more motivated to do the others. Um, and then also try to let go of perfectionism. It's better to send. Um, the progress that you've done, even though it's not perfect, it's better to send the progress that you've done. Maybe that report that you need to submit, it's before a deadline. So instead of saying, oh, I want to make this so perfect, um, so I get a, an A grade or something, try to just submit what you've done and continue building on it afterwards. So it, that also gives um, the people you report to like that confidence that okay, um, at least this is what she has done instead of not sending the report early and then like maybe one or two days later, like what happened to this report and I'm trying to perfect it. Uh, so just send what you have and maybe um, you can also get like feedback on what you need to improve. And then also um, avoid taking on too much so if you feel like um so this is something that and it's also it comes with somehow related to different personalities of people so sometimes you might try to take in a lot and um you, you may have a lot on your plate already but because you went to people please or things like that or you just haven't really understood a am I going to finish all these tasks well? You just continue having so much on your plate that you end up not um, doing all of them or at least some of them. So just take what is enough. And this comes with also proper planning. Like tomorrow, I don't have enough time for this. So um, I'm not going to promise you this, but we can maybe reschedule it or... Um, maybe delegate it to someone else. And then the last thing is to just start. Um, if you have a list of things, maybe you've done all those time blocking. So just start instead of waiting for, yeah, like Nike said, just start. And then the, you'll, get, you'll get the flow of momentum slowly, slowly by slowly when you just start. And yeah, so I think we have also talked about um, this. So previously on the on the previous slide, we talked about setting goals and then from goals, you prioritize your tasks. So this is just the same. So understanding exactly after having that list of the goals that you need to do, it could be even like 50 tasks or things that it could be even things like send, send that email or send that message to this person. Um, you could all just write it down and then understand what's important and what's not and then also understand like in what order things need to be done which one starts and then which one ends and then once you know what your priorities are you plan out a schedule for the task the day or the week and then um, yeah, like we said, time management is all about practice. So the more you try it, the more you, yeah, the more you do it, the more it becomes natural. Like it becomes just a part of your DNA and you understand, okay, it becomes a routine, which is something that you need to um, start planning or crafting in your head. And as you guys are trying to be product managers, the one thing that you, project managers, I mean, the one thing that you, you need to understand is you are the, you're the lead in that project. So however that project goes, it's all up to you. Like, is everything up to task? Is everything up to bar with, um, in terms of timeline schedules, the deliverables? Do I know what, um, what things need to be done first and which ones are not like a higher priority at that moment? So you need to understand all of this. So, and that also comes with understanding like um, the project deadlines and timelines. So understanding that 
I have three months to finish this project. This is my team. Everyone understands exactly what they need to do and when they need to do it. So it's important for you to lead that team um, with them understanding how, like, the importance of timelines and uh, deadlines. And yeah. So it's important for them to also, um, as a project manager, just maybe train them or make them understand about the importance of timelines and deadlines and how it's important for the project you'll be um, working on. So um, when we talk about prioritization, there are different techniques or, uh, yeah, there are different techniques that can help you um, understand exactly what tasks you need to prioritize and which ones you don't need to prioritize. And these are just some of the examples. So the first one, which is my favorite, is this Eisenhower matrix. So it's basically a two by two matrix that, um, yeah, it's a two by two matrix that tells you, that helps you to map out your goals for the day so you could have already listed your 10 or 20 tasks that you need to do in a day or maybe five depending on your work and your schedule and then you come and map all those idea all those ideas or goals on this uh, map so you start with the first quadrant so it's um it's urgent, is this task urgent? Like, do I have a deadline? If the meeting is in two hours and I need to have that report for presentation, that shows that it's very urgent. And is it important for me to present that thing on the meeting? Yes, if it can wait until the end of the month, then it's urgent, but it's less important. So is it something that you can delegate? But if something is very important and urgent, you have to do it now. So you, on your list of goals, you can label it as number one, number one, or number two. And then the second one, the second quadrant is, it's less urgent, but it's very important. So this one, you need to add it to your, you need to, you need to add it to your um, things to do on a certain day. So uh, always start with the most important um, work or jobs. So um, whether it's urgent, whether it's not urgent, always start with the most important jobs. And then, so for the, for the urgent ones, that's what you start with as then, and then you progress to the less urgent ones. And then the lower, the lower side of the quadrant is for the less important jobs that you may have. Um, so as a project, ma as a project manager, can I delegate this to someone in the team who can do this for me so you can focus on the more important um, parts of the project? Um, if you can delegate, um, do it. If you can't, you schedule it and uh, you schedule it on your, yeah, schedule it on your, on your time, on your schedule and yeah get to work on it later and then we have the less important and less urgent stuff this could be things like um well when you're man managing a project something like keeping up with politics or TikTok or facebook or whatever the, those things are um they're not really um they're not really urgent and they're not important for the project so you need to understand that the project is your priority and those other things you can do it on your free time but during your work hours time try as much to avoid and it's also one of the things that we talked about earlier try as much to avoid any distractions that come your way and yeah if it's family you need to let them know I don't need any distractions between this and this time. If it's um, work or colleagues or colleagues who like to chat a lot, um, just um, make it clear to them that you need to focus on this and this time and you can catch up maybe over lunch or after work to talk about things. Um, so yeah, that's the first prioritization technique. 
The second one is the um, ABCDE model. So uh, basically, it's a method that just involves um, assigning priorities to tasks using the alphabetical ranking. So it's one of the things I noticed with the ABCDE model is it doesn't really take into account the agency the agency of the tasks so it just um it's on which is more important and which one is less important so it's missing the agent factor which i think is also a very important thing to consider but it's still a technique that you can use um to you so you just after listing all the goals for the day um assign from a to maybe e so which one is more most important and then b not too important and then c d e things like that so you can you'll find that at e um the tasks are not they're the less important tasks um or the things that you can just do away with um so yeah so you but now after assigning the tasks with a b c d e you can then tackle tasks according to um priority um the other technique to prioritize task is a moscow method and this is basically it's a very common technique in project management and it's used to prioritize requirements or tasks so tasks are categorized into four groups that is must have should have could have and won't have or will not have so this helps maybe the stakeholders to identify the and focus on essential requirements or the tasks that are crucial for uh, the success of a project and then we have the last one it's the moscow is still somehow similar to abcde um but still uh miking is eisenhower because how do we tell which one is more urgent and which one is not so urgent here um and then the last one is uh Pareto principle so this is the 80 20 rule which basically um so it states that it's a principle and it states that um, roughly the 80% of the outcomes comes results from 20% of causes or efforts. I think it's somehow related to the cause, the law of cause and effect. So um, small, small uh, effort that you put can on a day to, as long as you're consistent, the small efforts that you make maybe today, um, maybe you need to do a report in a period of a month and then you decide to um, allocate maybe something like um, in a week so you can break it down into a week and say I'm going to start the top part um, this week and then the next week I'll add this part and then so by the end of the month you've finished everything that you needed to do so sometimes it can some people so yeah so some people would prefer to um maybe schedule a whole day to finish one task but if you find that uh that can be very um boring um just focusing on one thing you can just um decide to plan that i'm going to allocate this amount of hours for this specific task and this is the time i will be working on so small small efforts that you put can yield in um 80 percent of um output so as opposed to um doing something like putting in 80 percent of efforts in one sitting and then at the end of the day you find that the results are not as good as if you have um if you would have just done it in small small ways and in a way i think you can justify this by um thinking about like if you if i decide to start writing on things and then tomorrow i maybe go to the gym or take that walk and or maybe 
yeah so during that time you find that you start to your mind automatically starts to digest what you've been doing lately or you just start thinking about those things and you find that more ideas come to you um more ideas come to you with time um the more like the more you do yeah you get new ideas with time as opposed to doing everything all at once so by identifying and prioritizing tasks um you have the greatest impact that have like the greatest impact um individuals can try to maximize their productivity and all so those are some of the prioritization techniques that we have um so now that you have already identified or yeah you've identified the priorities of tasks according to high or low urgent and not urgent you now go to um make a schedule so if you're an old school person you can use your notebooks but i would advise google calendar just like dorcas and the other guys also use um so they make a google calendar is good and i think bernard also mentioned that it gives you reminders like 10 minutes before time it reminds you that you have this meeting or things like that um so in a very busy world um schedules are very important um yeah so uh you can use a Google Calendar to make a schedule. And then while making a schedule, estimate the time allotment for each task. So for example, um, writing this report or doing this task will take me approximately one hour. So um, it's also good to understand like your ability to finish a task um, in a certain duration like how long do you think this will take me that's also something you need to um think about when writing it so you don't end up putting in um less time for a task that would uh may for a task that would end up um taking more time and then um number two is block all important set time obligations so um this is also on avoiding distractions um yeah so time block them on a google calendar and then be very flexible and also make sure you set uh time for breaks and this is very important because you don't want to end the day being very exhausted and your mind can shut down if you if you don't take breaks um be nice to yourself give yourself breaks each time and yeah um so this is still a continuation so after eliminating distractions for you to stay focused you have um different techniques like pomodoro i don't know if some of you use this it's you can find it on youtube it's basically um someone just uploads uh on youtube it's it looks like someone who's uploaded uh maybe a one hour um youtube video and then it's silent or if you prefer music it has ambient music and then it it kind of has a bell that it rings after every 25 minutes to remind you okay you need to take a break or 25 minutes have elapsed so it basically um the technique is basically a way to make you focused so number one you decide on the task that you need to do and then you engage in deep work and i don't know how else i can emphasize the importance of having deep work and um it's something having deep work just means like having all your thoughts keeping your phone away distractions and everything and all your focus is just on one thing and you realize that you get to finish all these things um very early and you're also more productive because you you're not thinking about two things at the same time you need to 
even just stay away from your email or things like um, your LinkedIn notifications or messages or things like that. So you just set times to maybe view your email like at certain hours of the day. So for example, after an hour, I'll be checking my email because you could be doing one thing and then you find that one notification and then you go there and then it just takes you to another loop of other events and you lose your focus on what you needed to do. And then afterwards you notice, oh, the time I had blocked for this thing has already passed and you've done nothing. So engaging in deep work is very, very important. And yeah, so keep all the distractions away. And then after having like maybe doing that deep work for like 15 or 30 minutes, depending on you, you can take um, you can take a break after that, after engaging in deep work. So deep work could maybe take things like 25 minutes or depending on what you think. And yeah, make sure you take breaks and then repeat the same cycle. Um, yeah, that's the Pomodoro technique. And then uh, this is something I would also recommend. So at the end of the day, when you've done, when you've tried um, to, when you've tried all, all of that plans, you've set your goals, you've done the work as you should, um, it's going to be uh, very important to sit down at the end of the day, maybe for like 20 minutes and then reflect about how your day went exactly. And then, this uh, could be examples of if you're someone who journals, um, you could um, you could journal this. If you're someone who doesn't journal, it's okay to just also think about these questions. Like, um, it's also going to make you more aware of how exactly did my twenty four hours or, or my twelve hours of the day go. So. You can think about how did I use my time today? And if you're someone who's addicted to Facebook or TikTok, you'll see that um, you'll find, you, you, you can become more aware that, oh, I wasted a lot of time on something that was not um, useful, or did I actually use my time well? And then understand also, what tasks were you able to do and what didn't get done. So this is also a way of you, you can never get it right the first time, but then you understand, okay, um, I was able to do this task for this and this, for this amount of duration of time and I didn't finish. Can I alter my, my, um, my plan for tomorrow and allocate more time for this specific task? You also get to learn more about yourself and how you do tasks and also understand your energy levels. Um, so there are some days you could have um, high energy levels and some days not so high. And um, especially, this is especially for women, sometimes our energy levels varies according to different times of the, of the year or the month. So you need to understand exactly um, and your energy levels and yeah, also your stress levels. Um, think about also the tasks that made you most stressed and those tasks are the area of frogs that you need to eat. And yeah, also um, look at ways or where you need to improve more on your weekly schedule. And then also it's going to be a key thing to understand what your time wasters are. Like for me, I noticed my newer email messages so you'd get so many emails and it would take you to that loop of whoop. um yeah this is so yeah mine was time wasters what are your mine was email so what are your time wasters something that you can just evaluate at the end of the day and then also understand was procrastination an issue and this could be so if you find that you have an issue with procrastination this could be something with um how you've programmed your mind or your your mental state so there are yeah so try to so there are ways um on another topic i think next week uh it's going to or maybe in two weeks it's going to focus specifically on procrastination so procrastination is something that um 
it's something with our with how we've just programmed our mind and it's it's something that can be corrected so you find that your mind tells you oh i'll do this for the last minute um so it's also what we're going to talk about but try to understand if procrastination was an issue to you or if it wasn't an issue to you um so yeah the other thing is maybe the forms of procrastination so number one you could you wouldn't um so you'd think that if i ignore this task and then you hope that it will go away or no one will ever remind you of this that's a form of procrastination and also underestimating how long it will take or just overestimating your abilities and resources um we've also talked about it and then telling yourself that poor performance is okay that's this is setting this is wiring your brain in a not this is yeah in a not so good way so um this yeah it also comes with insisting on perfection and then um believing that repeated minor delays won't hurt you um which will and then instead of talking about what you're going to do just do it that's also a form of procrastination and i think it's also common to a lot of people and we should try to do rather than just talk about what you're going to do um so like we said procrastination is a mental state so you have to you have to try and win that mental battle by every day committing to being on time or telling yourself or just waking up every day and saying you know, how you're going to commit to your goals um there are a lot of youtube videos that try to also encourage your um affirmative words or things that um help you to they wire your brain in a different direction in a day so instead of every day waking up and start scrolling this kind of um videos will help you um wire your brain in a certain way to think um to think well and then um this other things i think we've talked about them so setting and keeping deadlines organizing and scheduling then eating your frogs and then finding a way to make the game of your work fun i don't know how but this is personal to you try to make it fun and also in that spirit of trying to make your work fun also try to make the work the day or the work for other colleagues fun so try to cheer them up in a day it could be sending one funny thing or something or just a, a message of appreciation for doing this in a way you'll make that day as well as making your own day and then reward yourself when you're done this could be things like spending quality time with your family watching that great movie with you and your family or taking yourself out and things like that once you've actually um so yeah once you've hit your goals for the week and then also keep your friends and family um, make them accountable also for you in a way um so if you have if you have people or friends who try to mislead you in one way or another um try to either avoid them or make communicate in a way that makes sense to them of why this is important for you and your personal growth so um then so time wasters could be people like your friends or your phone or other things social media things like that and yeah another thing is to wake up wake up every day and say that you're going to commit to the goals that you made yesterday um that's it for today i'll just leave with a quote that the bad news is time flies but the good news is you're the pilot and you're able to um steer your day in a direction that you please uh so i'll leave this 
for questions before we dive into the challenge document for this week. Yes, I just sent me. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. I uh, actually want to ask a question concerning the uh, Google Calendar. Can you please uh, uh, expatiate more on the Google, Google Calendar again? I will appreciate that, please. That slide is not clear. Okay, um, thanks for that question. So my assumption was um, maybe you're aware of how to use Google Calendar, but let me just, um, I'm sorry, I missed that part. So Google Calendar is basically just, uh, it's one of the products from the Google suite. Um, do you use Google? Uh, do you use the Google Workspace a lot? Um, I'm aware you use, like, for example, yeah. if you want to access your Drive, you if you want to access content, we're currently using Google Drive. So um, do you use Google Workspace? Have you used it before? Mm, yes. Well, I, I, I think uh, what, what I think is that uh, in, uh, making this uh, calendar, um, uh, schedule we need to uh, to create the timing and the using calendar or the, I thought I came uh, a bit late into the class so I thought maybe you spoken concerning that earlier on before my arrival that's why I'm asking if you can help me uh, talk about how to be creating a okay the, the, the thing. Okay, um, let me, allow me to just share my screen and show you from my, so if you, you just log into calendar.google.com or just search for basic Google Calendar. And then I have, um, I have moved, so I'm showing you my, this is a sample of my Google Calendar. So I'm showing you from the month of August, so from Sunday, um, 18th to Saturday 24th so over here you can choose um, you can change the view so if you want a day view so it shows you exactly from 5 a.m. Uh, up to maybe uh, 11 p.m. at night so this is your day so if you're creating tasks you're going to maybe start um, create and then you'll like um, I have a session with John Academy, and then you can change the time. So it's maybe this day, let's assume it's on that day, and then you can say from 5 a.m. or um, 8 a.m. You have that session, and then you it automatically tells you how many hours you can choose 30 minutes one hour or so you see this time to this time and then um add if if it's a google meet oh i have another meeting at 10 minutes um but yeah you can add this and then if it's a google meet add it if it's not if it's a physical meeting you can add the description or anything here and then you save, and then you can see on your time that you have, a, it's it's going to show you. So this is basically time blocking. It's easy to just create. Um, and you can do this for um, many things. So if you change also the view to a week, you can see how your week goes. So depending on how many um, events you create, um, if you want to understand more deeply on that, you can, um, so if you want to understand more on that, you can also, uh, there are YouTube tutorials that I would advise you to go have a look at how to create, um, how to create, how to use Google Calendar and things like that. I think you're going to find a more comprehensive way, but I'm sorry I missed it. 
Um, I should have added it to my tutorial. Um, but due to the interest of time, I, I'll just uh, advise you to go to Google, to YouTube. Apologies for that. Um, so the other question is, can you explain the difference between ABCD and Moscow in terms of their outcome? Okay. Um, so basically, so the ABCDE in terms of outcome, like it's basically the same thing. So for ABCD, after you've written all your goals for the day, they could be five or 10 or 20, and then you, you label it on the side. So this task one is high priority. So you label it A. Task two is maybe a medium priority B. So at the end of the at the end of the at, after at the end of the day, you're going to list. Um, so after listing all the tasks according to the priorities, you can then now start with priority A. Then you go to B and then C. So yeah, so you're going to start with the tasks that you've labeled A, and then you go to the tasks that you've labeled B after you're done with A. Um, yeah, so in terms of Moscow method, um, so it's basically just the same. So all this, so these are just the different options that you can choose to use. Um, but like I said, I prefer is an hour, but you can use any of this depending on your needs and which one you feel right. So for Moscow, it's basically same as just labeling your uh, after listing all the tasks, you're going to label the tasks according to, um, so you just, instead of writing A, B, C, D, E, you're going to write this one you must do, this one you should do, and this one you could do. So in that way, in terms of priority, like higher priority, low priority, and then the won't have are the unnecessary things that you don't need to do. Um, oh. Um, so what I meant by eat the frog first, it's, um, it's basically a phrase. Um, yeah, it's a phrase that basically just tells you, so a frog is something that's, uh, maybe, uh, it's maybe just a word to mean, uh, the very hard tasks that you, you, you probably you're not, you don't want to do because you feel like it's hard or um, you're trying to avoid it because it's hard, it takes a lot of time or you probably don't understand it well enough to actually do it. So those are the things we call uh, the frogs. So a frog is basically, um, so yeah, that, that task that you don't want to do at the moment. So um, when I say eat the frog, you have to do prioritize those tasks that are hard and that you feel like you don't want to do um, because uh, you feel like they're big and hard to do. And they're mostly the most important tasks because once you finish um, doing the hard tasks, it's going to give you like, it's going to scientifically, you're going to release the, um, the this hormones that you release after when you feel accomplished with what you've done and it's going to set the ball rolling for you to actually complete the other tasks. So uh, it's, yeah, I, I hope that's, um, let me just try it. Let me give you a link of maybe something that explains it better. Uh, so yeah, I've shared the link on the in-call messages. So if you if you guys excuse me, I have another session starting in five minutes that I need to prepare. Off. But let me just take you through the um, exercise for this week. So it's basically something on um, time management, and it gives you just an introduction about time management and the benefits of it and tips. And then the task starts from here. So the deliverables and tasks to be done. So um, you're given a sample of, like imagine it's a day and then you have a series of tasks due and here it's like 16 tasks that you need to finish in a day. And then 
uh, you're going to number one for the exercise prioritize all this 16 tasks into which one is high priority which one is medium and which one is low and then you use google calendar to schedule these tasks and then you allocate the different time blocks um from 8 to 5 p.m just like i've showed you so for all the tasks just decide how you're going to put them and then so this task ignores the other personal life um things um but yeah and then so you need to choose which tasks you can do today the high priority and then there are some tasks that you've decided you want to do today maybe because they're not of high priority or they're not urgent or yeah or something that you can delegate and then um yeah so you true you have to just tell us why do you think uh, why did you decide that this task you're not going to work on today? Maybe it's not urgent, maybe it's not important. And then, yeah, so from the different time management strategies, you're going to tell us which one um, you feel worked for you. So we had the four, or yeah, we had the four matrix uh, techniques, sorry. And you're just going to tell us which one worked well for you. And then maybe just a reflection of your experiences from this exercise particularly just how you manage time during your day. So um, this will be submitted to so create slides and then you submit them. Or if you prefer to write a report, um, yeah, if you prefer, you can write a report on Google Docs and submit it. Um, yeah, let's we can call it a session. Um, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your contribution. And I'll I'll see you next week. Have a great, have an amazing day. Bye.
Hello. Hello. 